Oh, I love it. Okay, I think uh, we, we will have two or three cryo uh, challenges this time. Very exciting. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Uh, some of you know me, maybe. Uh, Alex Ravrankov, I run a company called In Silicon Medicine. Um, and we are a drug discovery company. Uh, and one of the highlights of what we did today was we de developed a generative chemistry engine which allows you to generate molecules with the desired properties. And some of those molecules are already in phase one clinical trials, so it's pretty cool. Um, very focused on aging, but today I want to talk about something that is completely out of uh, the scope of what I'm doing. Um, and uh, this is not something that I'm trying to promote externally, so please don't share on social media that Alex is on cryonics. Um, my investors would probably not like that. Um, but I think that nowadays uh, we need to look for plan B. So many of the aging researchers, uh, I guess, who spend some time in uh, different areas of, uh, of aging research realize that uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer to get to uh, really actionable interventions that will allow us to get additional um, 50, 60 years of, uh, of life. Uh, and uh, now it's a good idea to look at alternative technologies that will have a dual purpose that might be uh, applied in real life or uh, in a variety of industries, like for example, meat preservation uh, or uh, emergency medicine, or if somebody wants to go to Mars, it's a good idea to have the ability to uh, freeze and unfreeze, for example, if you run out of food. Uh, we've seen the movie Martian. And about a year ago, I started looking at uh, cryo as uh, a potential research direction and hired a couple analysts who are doing work in different areas. Uh, so I see that right now we are in a cryo winter, uh, just like we had an AI winter before 2013, 2014. And um, in order for us to get to the cryo spring, we need to probably f find a way to revive a mammal from cryo and show to people that it's possible. So if we set that as a goal, uh, the goal would be reversible cryopreservation uh, for a large, uh, uh, Okay, I've got a pointer. So for a large uh, object, uh, preferably mammal, uh, we need to solve multiple uh, problems. So one is, of course, we need to uh, figure out how to reduce or prevent ice crystal formation during the cooling stage. Um, again, the goal is to revive. So we need to think about this in the context of how to go, uh, how, how, to, how to revive first. Uh, then how do we prevent ice crystal formation uh, during the warming phase. Uh, how do we prevent protein denitration? Uh, how do we prevent uh, ischemia? So one of the areas that I'm very interested in right now uh, is, of course, um, uh, is, of course, noble gases. So we're looking at uh, a variety of uh, uh, noble gases uh, that might be able to help us uh, achieve rapid cooling uh, and also rapid reheating under certain pressure and temperature conditions. Um, so for both uh, uh, prevention of uh, ice crystal formation during uh, the cooling stage and the warming stage. Uh, and um, uh, there were a range of experiments done in noble gases with xenon, argon, and a few others for cryo um, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and many of those experiments were done in the 90s, and now a few people try to repeat them, and unfortunately there is no data properly published. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is to create a computational model for the noble gases, uh, an interaction of noble gases with water uh, and with biological systems, and then uh, develop an experimental system that will help us generate the data. So, if you go to, uh, I, I created those slides just you know five minutes before this talk, so sorry. Uh, but this one you can uh, see in the overall slide deck. So I think for us, in order to achieve industrial biostasis and cryostasis uh, system um, where we can demonstrate to the industry that it works, uh, we need to first uh, create a variety of uh, enabling technologies. So one 
is that something that I already have. I can utilize uh, generator for reinforcement learning systems to generate uh, um, uh, antifreeze agents with the desired properties and with minimal toxicity, preferably. So we have uh, a project there on the way. So designer antifreeze agents using generator for reinforcement learning. And then uh, we can also use ML uh, to come up with uh, novel solutions of novel gases, uh, novel combos of novel gases that would allow us to also achieve reasonably cheap uh, freezing and unfreezing uh, and utilize different pressure, um, uh, pr pr pressure conditions in order to, for, for us to um, be able to saturate the body with gas. Uh, instead of just uh, running it through blood vessels. So right now, the major challenge I see is that there is an absence of large-scale data uh, for ML for or experimental platforms to study the properties of gas mixtures under desired uh, um, temperature and pressure conditions, uh, and there is no data set that we can currently use. And uh, uh, again, what I have to work with is the databases from the 50s and 60s uh, where we don't have really good understanding of the physiological properties and actually just uh, uh, physiochemical properties of those noble gases under different temperature and pressure conditions. And uh, if any of you are good engineers who are interested in um, uh, designing an experimental system where we can have multiple uh, gas, ga gases uh, on input and uh, a chamber that would be a, would allow us to measure the various properties of uh, uh, noble gas interactions with water and biological systems, I can potentially fund it and um, uh, identify as w additional ways to progress it. So that's what that's the reason why I want to come here. And of course, uh, if you have a database of antifreeze agents, we can start using generative chemistry to improve the physiological properties of those agents. So, thanks. Do you have time for questions? Anyone? Questions? Comments? Yeah. Uh, Aaron, can I use your flowchart that you yeah. built? <laughs> the, the one before this? Yeah. Uh, sure. So, currently it's a community effort, but I think that uh, we will try to compartmentalize with some people. Wonderful. Right. This is um, one sort of general thought, and this, this isn't my field, I know it's more your original field, but yeah, for a few of the talks is that, you know, if you want to collaborate with academics that are doing this, like maybe a connectedness with academia, like I'm sure there are many professors at MIT that are working on this that we can just introduce I would love to get connected, but what I did, I basically mapped out the conferences in cryonics and refrigeration. Um, the biggest one was just, uh, just concluded in China. Uh, it was virtual, three days. Uh, nobody is actually talking about like xenon and argon and uh, cryo, right? So they are talking about more industrial applications and you know the science of meat, etc. Um, and uh, I, uh, there is just no groups out there that currently study the properties of xenon and water, for example. Well, there's Google Scholar, right? And if you can Google and uh, use the keywords, you will find very little. And if you use some uh, AI systems, uh, there is also very little available since, like, 2000s. Right. Well, maybe, but maybe there's a grad student in the lab that wants to take Well, that's why I'm presenting here. I want to find people to fund. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I, I might know somebody who can help you. Do you have, like, a write-up or, a, like, a... Sort of summary of I do have a few people working for me, so uh, <laughs> I've been funding this for a I while. Know a crazy chemical engineer who knows a lot about lots of different properties of chemicals who probably would want to do something like this. Here in the U.S.? No, in Canada. Oh, that's better. All right. Great. It's a match. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Alex.